But he was starting to feel like he was getting the hang of this. There was a way through to victory. He could feel it. He just had to keep running the path of destinies. With that, the book fluttered back to the beginning, and he fell into it. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert, as tempting as it was to explore ancient mysteries. There was a war going on. And also, his old friend Lupino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lupino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Ah, Lupino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lupino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. Lupino's frantic message said that the Ravens were going to kill him for being a rebel spy. And that he had a clever plan. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Or so Lupino had told him over the far speaker anyway. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? the sandcastles when he was too... was odd. Renato had been here, at this exact place, at this exact time. But this time, there were so many more ravens. Well, the eyes have had it.
That's my order, thought Renato. He was such a wit. Pleasant breeze coming through that door. Had it been closed before? Landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Well, unless he really was a traitor, obviously. Then they'd probably pin a medal on his chest. Arcane power and an engraving to Cindy. Bloody, Renardo finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renardo recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We capture Zenobia. We find out what she knows. And that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and, oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. They'd been 
close. She'd told him things no one else knew, but she'd never told him who she really was. She knows all the Emperor's plans, chuckled the Master Spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right, said Lapino. Taking her would change the game, all right. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. something he'd seen in a play once. He once met a pirate captain. He used hooks to get around his ship. Oh, what was his name again? Something useful in these things, didn't there? him to capture Zenobia. Uh, obviously it was a trap. But you never knew how Lupino thought. Sometimes his plans were so convoluted they did the exact opposite to what Lupino wanted. Yeah, there must be some way to play on that, Renato thought. Ice walls only let you through if they knew you were cool.
These things really slice like ham. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong, thought Renardo. Go ahead. I'm sure you know better, said Lapino. Where was a workbench when you needed one? Oh, never mind. The road less traveled, thought Bernardo. How intriguing. Time, boys! Called the lead raven. Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up at her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She became smoke. And he noticed he had a blade to his throat. Stay a while. Purred a familiar voice. Did you really think you could capture me? Zenobia said as her ship lifted off. Now I just wanted some privacy, Renato said. Did you ever wonder why the Emperor adopted you? And he told her why. His Imperial Majesty wanted to bring the lost gods back. They could make him immortal. But to seal the bargain, he needed a sacrifice. Someone who truly loved him. You're lying. She was furious. You can't prove that! I can. And so, we set sail for the Nexus. The scientists at the observatory have resurrected one of his victims. Well, he's not exactly alive. But he can talk, and he can't lie. You took a big risk. You know, I could just... 
cast a spell to make you tell me where the rebel base is. And you wouldn't consider that cheating? She frowned. Ugh, oh, fine. Let's go get your witness. The rebellion had started after atrocities that the Empire hushed up. Renato had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred for one book. He had slept in a burnt village. Dead kittens and puppies had come to tell him what the Emperor had done to them. Smashing things was fun. No, seriously. He couldn't feel his paw anymore. There were stickers all over the platform for really hot lady foxes, with pictures and addresses and everything. Renato wondered if his future self had commissioned these poles.
caught up with him. Don't you think I'd know if my father started practicing black magic? Why? Would you want to join in? Oh, no, no, I'd destroy his books and... Uh, all right, I suppose I wouldn't. She stopped, troubled. He ran on. Scientists on this island had been investigating the Emperor's dark rituals on their own. They were neutral in the civil war engulfing the Empire, but they could see that the dark magics the old toad had loosed were changing the world. Bernardo hoped he and Zenobia weren't putting them in danger. Energy spheres. Easy to dodge, but why did they sting if you didn't pay attention? The observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists and black feathers everywhere. The ravens had taken care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders. Zenobia stared around, shocked. The scientists had been neutral. They had no part in the rebellion. Take me to your council, she said, shaken. I have things to tell them. It was what Renardo had gambled on. The Zenobia would turn against her father once she knew his madness. But the rebel base was secret. Could he really risk taking the Emperor's daughter there? Renata reached the Pino by Far Speaker Toad, the one creature the Ravens had left alive at the observatory. Lapino seemed awfully anxious to meet him at the secret base. If he was a spy for the Empire, he turned around and revealed the coordinates to the Empire, jeopardizing the entire rebellion. But Renato couldn't bear to think that Lupino would commit such horrible treachery. They were still good in the Mad Rabbit. He felt sure of it. I'll meet up with you at the base, Lupino said through the toad. Good thinking. Renato gave him the coordinates. There's a shuttle here I can uh, borrow. Renato found Zenobia in the chart room. I've been having awful dreams. She said, dead kittens and oh, worse. I thought there were only dreams, you know. Why would anyone want the lost gods back? In those days, the favorite of a god could become immortal. She held herself and shivered. He wants to become an eater of souls. 
Well, I'm not afraid of dying. Just tired of boredom. <laughs> Renato said, but she didn't laugh. Silence fell as they flew towards the ruins of the city of Ubar, where the rebellion leadership was hiding. If Zenobia couldn't help them fight off her father, no one could. As they touched the ground, he could smell the ravens and hear their hungry caws in the distance. They're probably looking for me, she said. You go on ahead. She had that fiery look in her eyes that he'd always loved. It was a bit odd, though, how easy she'd been to convince. It was what he'd gambled on, but he'd expected more of an argument. She'd always loved to argue. She considered it the fastest way to the truth. Maybe she'd long suspected the truth. Sometimes all it took was taking the bandages from your eyes. That must be it, he told himself. Renato went to the china shop. For some reason, the owner was always nervous. This is yours, said Renato, but he couldn't hear his enemy's answer. the wings of a fly in the air. Not that he would. It's sort of mean, really. She moves, thought Renardo. Keep your limbo. If Zenobia had really turned, the war could soon be over. She could send orders to the fleet that would leave their defenses wide open. The rebels could sail right in and capture the Emperor. Victory, with not too many casualties. He was sort of yanking his own chain, wasn't he? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 
that's how we do it. <laughs> it was something he liked to do, but only after he'd killed all the witnesses. Fortunato. caught their breath under a ruined arch. It's beautiful, she said. This was the library of Uba, he said. Your father's ravens thought they had an ancient book. She nodded. Was she crying? This was exactly what I wanted, Renata thought. To turn her to our cause. So, oh, why do I feel something is terribly wrong? Because nothing ever goes this smoothly, is why. No skateboarding, the sign said. A workbench. Did he have any jewels he hadn't tried out? He had. Touché, he said, and died. The long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. He was on fire. So far, so good.
He hadn't noticed that path before. Council toads swarmed around Zenobia, shocked she was there, shocked she had changed sides. Then the walls exploded. He heard toads croaking, Oh, the ravens! Blackbirds were pouring through holes everywhere. It's a trap! cried the council speaker. In the confusion, he saw flashes of magic. Then Zenobia being hustled off by Imperial troops. So... She had betrayed him after all. Renato ran for his ship. The Farfarer flew into the clouds, barely losing the Imperial Ravens pursuing him. The rebellion was lost, and he had lost it. There was nothing to do but find Zenobia and make her pay for her treachery. His heart ached. He still loved her, but he had trusted her and he had been a fool. She would be back at the fleet, gloating with her mad, bloodthirsty father. For all Renardo knew, she was helping him bring back the old lost gods back from their exile. Renardo landed in the middle of the Imperial fleet. The rebels were losing badly. Without leadership, it was a slaughter. Renardo felt strangely free. Try think about how he had lost the war, trying not to think about how he had loved Zenobia, blinded himself to her treachery. That's what it meant to be a hero, to keep on fighting after the most bitter of betrayals, to never know if you could trust anyone. Cats, what a waste of fur. In this chest, there were woodcuts of amazing, beautiful vixens wearing no clothes at all. And something more useful. What had happened to Lupino? Had the mad rabbit fled to safety? Or was he forlornly carrying on like the few rebels Renato could see here or there? It didn't matter anymore. All there was was slash and spin, parry and lunge, over and over as he fought his way across the fleet. All there was was finding a girl he'd once loved who would use his love against him and putting a bigger hole in her heart as she'd left in his. Platforms were great. Renato wanted one for his house.
suddenly Zenobia was there, advancing a Lapino. So the mad rabbit had survived. Save me, or I'm done for! Screamed Lapino. Zenobia turned, showing her teeth in a smile. You're alive! Renato ran towards the witch. Lapino's the one who betrayed you! She shouted. He warned my father! Before he could think, Renato sank his sword into the sorceress. She stared at him, heart broken. No! Lapino's the traitor! Renato had an awful, sinking feeling in his stomach. Then, he felt a knife in his back. I'm afraid she's right, said the mad rabbit. Ain't I a stinker? Then, the sun went out. Damn it! And he hadn't learned anything new this time. He'd done the same thing twice, yet expected a different outcome. Thank you.